morning, everybody. <laughs> Penny's laughing. If you haven't had your coffee yet, that's, you know. Her ears have been pummeled. A little yeah. bit. It's okay. A little bit. Good morning, everyone. Hello, it's Ken coming to you live from the Circle on Ranch here at sunny, beautiful, windy Toledo, Ohio. And uh, I hold in my hands the stunning latest incarnation of the Reeves Cabrels RG1 signature model, little thing that we call the RG Sus. SUS, of course, standing for Sustainiac. And um, boy, there's a long story behind this guitar, Reeves. I mean, the funny thing is when we started working with Reeves, uh, there were some, uh, there were basically some limitations to our production capabilities. Well, and what, that. what we were able, yeah. I know. <laughs> He's <laughs> only one man. Yes, and what we were <laughs> sort of able to accomplish in house. And, um, and, and as we grew, we, um, we evolved uh, to the point where we could evolve Reeves's signature model into this thing that uh, that he was that that with the Sustainiac thing that he loved and has used, geez, for 30 years. Probably. Um, this is the Sustainiac is the Alan Hoover Maniac music version of the Sustainer. There's um, there's a couple different things out there. There's the thing that. Um, that Fernandez is it makes one yes. or and I don't know if that's licensed. I I am not a sustainer expert, folks. Uh, but yeah, the Fernandez one is called the sustainer, and the Alan Hoover one is called the sustainiac. Um, I don't know what the differences are. Yeah, this you can find on this guitar and on uh, the Joe Satriani um, yep. version. Uh, there's a Joe Satriani guitar from Ibanez that has this pickup system on it as well. Uh, and it's got some unique features, but uh, the the main one being it is it's um, uh, it's effectiveness. I think I, the Sustainiac version of this uh, gadget really works mm -hmm. and really works well and really grabs the note. And there there's some some cool stuff that goes on with this. And I'm just playing clean right now. When I was playing at the beginning, I was using my uh, MXR Super Badass because I'm a nerd. And that's what it sounds like with that on. So when you turn, so the misnomer is, okay, when you have the unit on, you can still play. It's on. And it's not really it's not really affecting things, you know, just being there until you stop. So there's three different settings there and, and the, the fundamental is the sort of the one that uh, especially clean that you can just grab that note and hang on to it forever. And it just rides it. octaves with the mini switch and this one's kind of neat where it does the mm -hmm. and added a little game to that and if you guys like because I know I do you know uh, especially I guess when I was more of a beginner, you know, you'd be playing a lead and you would accidentally grab that pinch harmonic and you'd be like, oh yeah, I just sounded like Slash there for a second, you know, like it would, you would, and then, and then you sort of figure out how the pinch harmonic works and you were able to grab it and get that going um, on command, right? And then, but sometimes when you're playing loud and, and you're sustaining a note and you get the just right you're standing in just the right place in front of your amp and your amp is at just the right volume and your guitar starts to feed back and then it jumps up into that subharmonic and you're like, oh yeah, and you're doing it. And the, the fun thing about this unit is you, you can get that with the flick of the switch at bedroom volume. You can get that crazy sustain with yeah, the harmonic. It's bad. It's not volume. really that loud. No, we're not playing. I'm not playing that loud at all. We're no. playing it at speaking volume right now. Uh, here's what happens when it's on and you let go of the strings. All the strings just start to vibrate. This, this unit here is 
electromagnetically making the strings vibrate. That's how it works. Um, interestingly, and one of the uh, one of the things that Reeves likes to point out about it is uh, we still have a three-way toggle. So this is the Reeves Gubrell's um, signature rail hammer bridge pickup. And then the Sustainiac unit is where the neck pickup would be. Um, you can use this unit as a neck pickup. And it sounds great. clean neck pickup tap mm -hmm. so and it blends well with the bridge so I uh, there's a lot of reasons why I'm talking about this particular guitar today one of the main ones is I had one here to talk about which is rare <laughs> um, it is rare we don't, it's a very limited production thing. Um, and the reason is, of course, um, we install the Sustainiac unit here in house. Zach, uh, ZSG, Zach Green does all the installs here. And it's, I mean, it's not like the end all of tricky installations, but it requires a little bit of effort and you have to wire the, you have to do the wiring properly and do all the stuff. And um, it's time consuming. And we only have time to do about four of them a month. And so, that's all we make, and they're always they're always pre-sold to dealers. Oh yeah. You know, so it never it never shows up in our in-stock page if you're in our dealer network. Um, so if you want to, if you you know, if you're a dealer and you want to get one of these going, you have to let us know and get in line, and we'll get you in line for one. And if you're a customer and you're looking for one, I am sorry how frustrating that can be because I do hear that. Oh, where can I find an RG sub? Where can I get? It, it is a very, very common question. It's a made-to-order um, thing. And, and so, yeah, and with the idea that we're doing, you know, I mean, we're always making them. It's just that we're, we're only making about 48 to 60 of them a year. Yep. And so um, uh, as a dealer, you know, it, or if as a customer, if you want to get one on order, any reverend dealer can get one. Um, you just have to let them know to get one on order. And um, I, this one was all set up and is uh, getting ready to go to Beast Music in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw it back there on the rack today. I was like, man, well, I haven't talked about one of those in a while. Right. And then, uh, and then, of course, the year 2020 brought this guitar about in Venetian Gold in the spring. Um, we did a handful of guitars in Venetian Gold, and all of them have proved to be, this has proved to be a really popular color for us with good reason. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it is one of the best-looking golds I've ever seen on a guitar. I really think... That um, that between I don't know Naylor and Penny we we, we knocked this thing. That was out, all Naylor. This, I didn't know this color was all Naylor. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I mean, there's gold guitars out there, but this yeah. thing doesn't. It's not quite the. I mean, it's certainly by no means is it the. Uh, what what did we used to call it? Lake Lakeside or Lakeshore Gold. Lake is Lakeshore. Is that the Fender term for that gold? And we called it something different or. No, shoreline right. is the fender, fender. Shore, yeah, yeah they call it shoreline gold which is a little browner well it's a quite a bit browner than this actually like the gil paris we did in that color for a little while or whatever yeah. and then of course the brand who shall never be mentioned through these lifts um in this format does a gold this quite famous for gold guitars actually from what i understand I may have heard that. And uh, and but theirs uh, has a tendency to skew towards the green, whereas this is just a bright. We call this Venetian gold because it is heavy. Um, looks great on this. We did this in silver for for quite a while and and a few other colors, uh, but we are going to continue to make this in Venetian gold through next year, as well as the the uh, ever popular dirt bike, uh, which also looks great in this color. And so that's what we're rocking for now. Um, in other RG Sus news, uh, if you guys tuned into the Orange Room yesterday, uh, Wildwood Guitars has just done a limited run of this in powder yellow, which looks rad. And powder yellow, black guard, kind of a, um, I mean, kind of a, a throwback color palette on one of the most modern instruments that we make. And uh, it's a pretty funky, cool vibe. And so that is an exclusive model to Wildwood Guitars, 
and we had Greg demoing that in the orange room for Wildwood yesterday. And there are only, I think, a dozen of those available or so. Uh, should be at Wildwood any time. Yep. So there is the uh, RG Sus. And again, I am not. I'm not going to sit here and say I am the master of playing this instrument. I am not. I enjoy it very, very much. And, uh, and I'm also not going to say that Greg is a master of playing this instrument either, not with this, this pickup unit or whatever. Uh, there are plenty of videos on our YouTube channel and elsewhere of Reeves completely destroying this guitar. Uh, Reeves and I did some taping at Wildwood last yeah, year when did. we did that gold to red burst yep. version of this and Reeves did some <laughs> absolutely killer playing on that and I would suggest tuning in and watching Reeves uh, watch Reeves explain how he uses it it's very very interesting and um, I'm and of course we're just proud to offer it I think it's bad to the bone and uh, note too on the on the Reeves Gabrels model this year we went back to the traditional headstock face and the traditional bolt-on um, but we are featuring a bound ebony board. Can I get in on that ebony? Look at that. Yeah, the ebony we're getting is just killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at and just with the with the off white dot markers and the bright white binding and the, this gold color. Can I have it? No, oh, it's going on, to be. I want to keep it. Well, you Brian has Brian, a, Brian has enough guitars. No, he doesn't need this one too. Yeah. She never lets me keep anything, folks, which is really not <laughs> true at all, actually. There's, there's a table of guitars behind her right now that begs to differ. That's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> she does truly let me keep stuff. But uh, anyways, yeah, so uh, I, what else, LG? Anybody have any questions about the RG Sus before I, I move on a little bit? What's the name of the pickup again? Uh, the Railhammer Reeves Gabrels Signature Bridge Pickup. The other one. Sustainiac. Sustainiac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Sus, you can find that. Sus is short for Sustainiac. If you can go right, just go to the Reverend website and go to the RG Sus page, and there's links to all of the, uh, to Maniac Music and all of how this works. I, I think they're literally Sustainiac.com if people want to look, really get technical and nitty gritty yeah, yeah, yeah. and no, you know what right. I mean. Yep. Yep. What wire does what and you know, all that. That's yep. your resource for that. Yeah. And the, the, and the, the, the dip switches are on and off for the unit. And then the three-way switch switches between your fundamental and then fundamental with a sub-octave and then fundamental with the sub-octave and the octave up, which does that, is the one that does that crazy feedbacky thing. That, yeah. that just, that super screaming thing. Right. You know, and when, in, again, me doing it is one thing. Watching Reeves do it with the legato that, that he has and his touch and stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, he it really does incredible things. With, uh, with, <laughs> with this unit, though, it's, it's bad to the bone. I should practice more, but uh, instead I am on desk yeah. <laughs> most of the time lately. Yep. Yes, because we're busy. Uh, I ain't going to lie to you. Johnny Cola says, Venetian Jay. gold, Italian purple. I'm waiting for baked ZD red. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I, I like I, the I thought of it. Hi, Johnny Cola. I miss you. And Dawn, how you guys doing? I hope you're doing fine. Uh, what as we roll into um, as we're stuck here in November, I'll lament the loss of the Fall Philly guitar show yeah. this year because that's when we catch up with a lot of our East Coast friends and Penny and I um, have been tying Fall Philly in with trips to well Monster Music in Levittown when that was there. We did that for many years, but Russo, Russo and Asbury Park and then anybody else on the East Coast that wanted to visit, we would we go went visit. To Spindrift and Connecticut the yeah, one we year. Went that to was fun. Drift. We went down to Alpha Music in Virginia Beach mm -hmm. one year after. Uh, that was the same trip. We were gone a long time for that trip, I think. Yeah, that was a long one, yeah. But it was and fun. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And so we always tie in stuff around that Philly show, and tying in stuff always involves at least one meal with Johnny Cola. And, uh, yeah, so it sucks that we didn't come out there this year. Of course, I we're Penny and I were supposed to be in England last week doing demos and clinics at Anderton's and Merchant City and Guitar Guitar and Peach Guitars. And yeah. We had that whole thing planned out, and then all that went poop. Boo. But uh, I saw that the Philly show is uh, on the calendar for next year. So. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. Um, not Bad Films over in YouTube, YouTube says, I love ebony fingerboards. Me is too. the wood being sustainably sourced? 
I know that's been an issue with Ebony and other brands. Uh, oh yeah, it is. It's, it's um, all of our sort of wood choices are based around what they can source sustainably. The same with the Carina. Um, boy, Penny, do you remember off the top of your head where the Ebony comes from? I just looked I at it and I don't remember exactly, but I, it, it's not the one that was, it's a different, it's a slightly different wood than the one that was causing all the problems. Yeah, because there's that, which is one of the reasons why we're seeing some of that zebra stuff in it. Like, mm -hmm. we're getting some figured ebony on accident because that is part of the, yeah, whatever part that of that thing. There's, I don't remember what there's the Latin a, there's name a, is, a but there's right, right, right. And there's a super black ebony that's an issue. Uh, that's an issue to source yep. and you're not seeing that in guitar building very much you are a new old stock you know what I yep. mean and the, the the wood that's already been harvested or whatever that stuff is still around um, but as far as where Mir is sourcing that from um, we're actually getting that sort of marbled thing which on some fingerboard looks really really cool um, and the, of course the Karina is very very accessible and the roasted maple comes from Canada eh? Yep. Oh, yeah. I believe so. Or good, Pacific Northwest. Good, good question. Yeah. And, you know, because I'm not the one ordering it, I can't tell you. All I do is when, 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 yeah, bec well, I mean, I don't work at Mir and I don't, you know, I don't stock their shelves or whatever. We just specify to Mir that we want X, Y, and Z, and then they tell us, yes, that's what we're capable of getting. I mean, right, this is right. a... Right, and, and they're very good about... Yeah, you know, making sure that everything is done yeah. right, and you of, know, of course they are, because that's—I mean—that's the world that we live in. Right. right. You know what I mean? It's you. And very that's how we're all going to stay in business, frankly. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pedro says I'm into metal, but would like to try something different to play the, in that genre. Can the Air Sonic with hum cutters do it? It can. Uh, we put the really high output. Um, Huevos 90 in the bridge, and uh, Naylor and I both love that Huevos 90 pickup. The clarity that you can get in that pickup with high gain is absolutely killer. And so uh, the Air Sonic can do that articulately. Is that a word, LG? Mm -hmm. Articulately? Oh, well, not the way you're pronouncing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you better believe it. Uh, Spike Mike. Say hi to Spike Mike. Hi, Spike Mike. He says, what's next in the bass lineup you would like to add to his collection? Oh, dude. Uh, we got some new colors on the triad. Uh, the triad is going all bursts next year. We just got in metallic alpine bursts uh, this week, and it looks bad to the bone. Uh, we need to get out there and really push the Sentinel. Uh, we launched the Sentinel this year, and then we had COVID, and then yep. it just sort of got... It was popular when it was first. Yeah, and it launched. and has remained very, very popular. Yeah. I mean, we're doing... That Sentinel bass is just... It's a pro-level short-scale bass, it, and it just crushes. It just sounds huge. And so you're going to see us leaning that into that a little bit more this year. And then coming very soon, we have an updated version of the Fat Fish 32 uh, with a different pickup in the neck position that sounds huge and that was born out of brad playing the original for a couple of years and saying you know what i'd really like it if the neck pickup did a little more of this and that mm -hmm. and then he and joe and blah 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 and here we are right um and we are also going to be making that bass in limited numbers but it will be available soon uh in black with the new pickup configuration and at some point next year uh probably won't be until the middle of the year uh, you're going to see a new color on the Watt Plower Mark II as well. And right now, our our number one base priority is to catch up on Watt Plower Mark II back orders because uh, it has been, it's been crazy popular. And we are very, very behind in production on that model. So we're working on catching that up as we speak. You, wouldn't, you can't tell by me sitting here that I'm working on it, but I am. Um, haunted hair says you've mentioned new colors coming for the roundhouse in 2021 with h-a-r-e oh i was gonna say my hair has become a ghost yeah <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry, I that was really dumb. What was your question? You've mentioned new colors coming on to the roundhouse I, oh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Would this Soon. be early 2021? Or late? Oh, yeah. No, like, as in they're in the building. We're going to be talking about them very, very soon. December 1st. Yeah, some non, I'm just going to tell you, some non flame tops. And they look great. Like, really cool. Yeah, worth road. Yeah, they're bad to the bone. Also, my boy over in England, what's his name? You have a lot, of, you know a lot of people over in England. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Pete. Oh, Danish Pete. Danish Pete. <laughs> Cornish Pete, Dutch Pete. No, he was Danish Pete. Danish Pete's going <laughs> to really like one of them a lot. <laughs> uh, Steve Amaral. Hi, Steve. Says, is Reverend the only brand mirror built? No, but uh, I'm not going to talk about the other brands that they built because that's their business and not mine. Well, Italia is their house brand. Can they do build that? Italia guitars, yes. Um, and uh, those are available out there in the world in limited numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, most, a lot of the Italia designs are designs that were um, uh, brought to life with Trev Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. And they make some really cool sort of retro guitars. Um, and those are also made at Mirror. And then there's a couple other brands that are made by our side. Companies that are about this size. Yeah, companies that are about our size. Um, Javier says, is that yellow guitar the one that Reeves from The Cure plays? Yes, it is. Not the, yellow, though. Yeah, the s Venetian gold. Uh, yes, it is. Um, Reeves actually has a gold one. Of course, The Cure hasn't been active since Reeves got his gold one, so he doesn't have it out there in the world yet. Uh, you will see Reeves play. Actually, if you check out my Instagram page at Haas.ken, I put up a picture of this guitar with a 2010 version of the RG1, which is the Black Flame Maple. Mm -hmm. And um, Reeves has a Sustainiac pickup loaded into a Black Flame Maple guitar that he calls, does he call that the Tavity? Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. and because um, Reeves and I are cat guys. <laughs> now, in all fairness, we're dog guys too. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can be both. Fluffy animals. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but Reeves' tabby guitar in Black Flame Maple with the Sustaniac loaded in it is, lives with the Cure uh, touring machine. And he plays that, I believe, on Wrong Number as well as a few other tracks mm -hmm. where he gets to really cut loose right. in the Cure. Um, and that is just an older version of this guitar. Uh, but indeed and Reeves could take this guitar and go do that gig with this guitar no problem we um, like Reeves prefers uh, 9 through 40 6 gauge strings it's a hybrid set of strings that has the top three strings from a 9 set and the bottom three strings from a 10 set and we we order those custom from DiMarzio for the guitars that we set up that ship directly to Reeves and um, there, it's kind of, it's just kind of an interesting story. It's just one of these weird little quirk thing, quirky things that we do here. Penny's looking at me like I'm crazy. No. Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm laughing at Chris. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, de, uh, not Demarzio, Diario, Diario XLs uh, normally come with those rainbow ball ends, and Reeves doesn't like the way the rainbow ball ends look on the Bigsby's on his Space Hawks, and so for when he's touring. Uh, Diodario makes him XL strings with all black ball ends so that it looks nice on his guitar. Uh, we also buy those strings from Diodario because we often set up guitars for Reeves so that we have them in house. So we set up all of Reeves's guitars with the 9 through 42 hybrid set um, of Diodario XLs. And so this guitar could go from my hands to his hands on the stage and rock. Yep, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chris Zielinski, dogs and cats living together. Yes. You know. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's our yeah. warehouse. Yeah, manager. Chris Zielinski is our <laughs> resident funny guy. <laughs> um, Kate would like to know if we've ever done a fretless bass. Kate, we never have. I have seen a couple of fretless Reverend basses that, um, that people have yanked the frets on and uh, put in the little perloid strips or whatever they do to, yeah. to do that. Or I've, I've seen a couple of fretless necks go on a couple of the old bases or whatever and it's very cool look and very cool vibe um, it's just it's a little niche for what we do 
Um, the way we manufacture instruments, we don't really have the ability to do one-offs. And so we do sort of do production runs of things. And the way things have been lately, um, we, we're so far behind on some of our popular models that we just, we don't, even the small runs are starting to suffer a little bit. And I don't want them to because I think the small runs is part of the fun right. of being here, you know. Uh, but we've never gotten in or spec'd a fretless bass. Um, so, and another, another way of looking at that too is, is of course, Joe Naylor designs all the instruments and he designs them all from the ground up. And for Joe to do a fretless bass, I think he would get lost and not get lost. I mean, he'd find his way out or whatever. But it was like, imagine LG when we started doing the 12 string. Mm -hmm. And I thought very naively, because I'm not a luthier or a guitar designer, that we could just do a 12-string club key and have it be done. And Joe was like, no, because I, you know, I think it's going to be a little boomy. And he, and he just started rattling off all the reasons. And then he had this whole idea in his head of all the things that he could do to make it perfect. And we ended up with a guitar on its own platform. you know. Um, and I think a similar thing would happen with a fretless bass. I think Joe would, you know, possibly look at what we're doing with, with any of our bass models and be like, yeah, but the pickups need to be put here and here in order to be effective because there's going to be more overtones and the blah, 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 blah. And then Joe would be off and running and we would end up with something very specific. And as a result, we haven't tackled that yet. This Boy, year. that was not 300 words. No, it was not. It was not. But um, but I'm just trying to be as honest as I can. Mark says, does the roundhouse fit in your typical LP case? Uh, Mark, I do not know. Um, and I'm going to guess no, uh, because the the roundhouse has an offset waist. Um, the waist, or the body on the roundhouse is sort of, is similar to the body on this contender behind me. Can you see the contender? Not really. Here? Got a contender back here. Uh, the roundhouse body is the same outside dimensions as this, uh, although it does not have the arm contour. It has a carp top instead. And of course, it has a 3 plus 3 headstock. But um, that being said, this offset waist, I don't think will fit in a case that isn't designed. That I don't think it'll fit in a case that's designed for a symmetrical, a more symmetrical guitar. Yeah, a more symmetrical guitar. Th yeah. Thanks, LG. You're welcome. Um, so I. I I never say never, of course. There, I'm sure there are some LP cases that it'll drop right into, but uh, I think the traditional one that comes from the brand that should not be mentioned, um, I don't think it'll go right in there. No. Uh, Indeed. Mike says, what's a color you guys haven't tried before but would like to? Oh, dude. Oh, that's a tough one. We play with color all the time, so it's hard to like... Yeah, I only play I, black guitar, so I don't know. Yeah, you're the one person to ask, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, I, boy, you know, I love metal flake guitars, and I love looking at them, and we've hit the rainbow of colors on the metal flake stuff. And, you know, I like all that goofy 80s stuff. I like all those swirls and things like that, but I don't think that any of that stuff is really appropriate for our guitars necessarily. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, we're always open to suggestions. But I don't, you know, I mean, I, I don't know that there's anything that I want to see personally that we haven't done. Right. Well, right. And we've done sort of every color in the rainbow, not every shade of every color, but. I like to do a plexi. <laughs> We're not doing a plexi. I, but they're dope. Okay. I'd like to do a chrome boy like Satch's guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Trouble Child says, will there ever be rail hammer single coils? I hope so, but I, I don't know. I, do, I couldn't even give you a time frame on anything like that. Um, the rail hammer pickups, of course, were, I think I said this last week, and so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but this gentleman asked the question, mm -hmm. so I want to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, the rail hammer pickups were specifically designed to give more clarity to humbucker guitars and to tighten up the bottom end on a humbucking pickup. Um, and to offer a humbucker, a traditional full-size humbucker that had the same output and punch as a humbucker, but add in the clarity of the single coil without sacrificing any of that output and punch. And um, 
single coil pickups don't have the clarity issue that tr traditional humbuckers did. Mm -hmm. So there's no design reason to start from the ground up with doing a single coil version. However, the idea that that we could make a really good sounding noiseless single coil sized pickup has been floated out there. The flip side of that is um, the parts that are needed to manufacture the rail hammer pickups are all custom parts. They're custom made. So out there in the world, there's people that make like bobbins. When you see guys winding their own pickups and stuff like that, I mean, they can get, they can call a pickup supplier and get magnets and bobbins and then they can make their own pickups. We can't do that with rail hammer. The bottom, the bobbins come from a custom mold and magnets are custom made. Um, so all of these things need to be prepared in order to even prototype these things. Uh, and we just haven't started going down that road in the single coil yet. Uh, but, you know, someday I would like to, but, I mean, we're talking years. We're not talking months. So right, right, right. It, it is definitely something that is on our radar. Right. Uh, Hollis is a Manta Ray fan. He needs a jazz box, and he was wondering when we would see something in that Manta Ray vein again. Boy, I'm hoping for the end of next year. I mean, that's loosely what we're shooting for. Um, Joe has a, some, a really cool idea, and we're, we're just, again, we're just working to realize it with his vision mm -hmm. and his stamp on it. Um, taking our time and doing it right, but it will be back. It will be back for sure. Yep. Uh, Brian is getting his first ever reverence, a space cool, hawk, Thank on I'll Wednesday. Nice, nicely done. Woohoo! Yeah. Thanks for checking in. The space hawk is rad. That is one of the more unique signature offerings for sure. Uh, Steve Zinn has got a Huevos 90 bridge. Is there going to be a Huevos 90 neck in the future? No, the Huevos 90 was designed as a bridge pickup. So your, your Huevos 90 neck would be the Nuevo 90 or the clean cut or the hyper vintage neck pickup. It'll actually balance with it very, very well. But uh, the idea behind the Huevos was, was a hotter version of the Nuevo 90 to um, get out there and rock with. And there's, I mean, there's some other little tweaks too, but, um, but it was designed as a bridge pickup. So we're not, uh, no. But it does, like I said, it balances well with just about any of our neck pickups, so you should be good to go there. What, you want to hear a really fun rail hammer set, LG? Sure. Huevos 90 bridge, Kyle shut neck. Yeah, that's fun. No, no, it works. They okay, sound really, they sound really, really good together. Cool. So, uh, that's the unofficial answer to your question. I think it's the official answer to your question because you are the CEO. Kyle Shutneck, my man. Yep. Sweet. Tim says, any chance of ever seeing an S style reverence? Yes. Soon even. Wait six days. <laughs> right around the corner. <laughs> Oop, did I say that out loud? You did. Yeah. Can we talk about the straps now? No. We can talk about the straps. We we haven't talked about them yet. They're still behind me on the twin. Okay. And uh, and yeah, I mean we've been on for a while now. I think we should talk about that so that uh, we can you know move on, let these poor people get back to their lives. Uh uh, before you get there. Yeah. Jason Bowes requested a Thunder Gun and Rock Orange, please. Oh, dude, that would rock so hard. <laughs> <sighs> I like where you're coming from with that. You usually I do. do. I do. I like where that's going. <laughs> Jason Bowes tuning in today. My best friend, folks, for many, many years. Since. It's nice to know he's watching. Since, since, since we were, were young lads. Since I saw the Misfits flyer in his locker in high school and went, ooh, there's one of me. Indeed. Oh, so uh, a lot of people that uh, tune in on this were asking, uh, the Reverend Strap that was made in conjunction with uh, our friends at Levy's slash Gator is now finally available. Uh, this strap was put together at Winter Nam last year. Joe Naylor uh, went over to the friends at Levy's and Gator and they sat and talked about what he liked about this strap and what he liked about that strap and how he wanted this to go and they put this together 
And uh, we had a minute where we thought we were going to launch this a couple months ago, and then at the last second, Joe uh, wanted to change something. And so we pulled the plug on it, and uh, I actually had to cancel a couple of orders because it was online for like 10 minutes, and a couple guys <laughs> ordered right. right away. And I felt bad I had to cancel their orders, and then it took us another six, eight weeks to get it together. Uh, but they are done, and they are in the web store at reverendguitars.com slash internet. I don't know. Go to the store page on our website and you will find them. Uh, they are adjustable from a certain amount of inches to another certain amount of inches, and I don't remember exactly what those are. Like but as you can see, they are adjustable. Uh, 44 to They are adjustable something. on the handy-dandy, uh, completely renewable seatbelt type strap thingamabob. And I think it's 41 to 53 LG. Either I way, a tall guy like me can play it, and that's what's, that's what's important. Um, really nice levies, uh, leather ends, uh, real, um, really nice tight snug fit that work very, very well with our strap button posts, which have a very nice flare to them. And, um, yes, LG. Did you say 41 to 53? Yeah. Was I right? Yes. <laughs> it's almost like I know what's going on around here. I know. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, genuine leather. Uh, I pointed out genuine with an E on the end, and then LG told me that genuine always has an E on the end. It made me feel like a fool. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and they're available in black because black guitars rule. Uh, and chronic blue, as you can see. Um, it's a little hard to see the white reverend on that. On, on the chronic blue? Camera. Yeah, but man, chronic blue has been huge this year for us as a color. And uh, this is darn close to the guitar. It's a little more aqua. It's got a, maybe a little bit more green in it than the Chronic Blue does. Uh, medieval Red, which this is definitely lighter than the Medieval Red, but it's certainly in the same family. And uh, this sort of uh, primer gray, which I dig. I think it really pops on this color. Mm -hmm. I think it's super cool. It looks cool with the silver guitar, of course, but it also, I mean, that's killer right there. I think that looks great. I think it looks great with the green, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, there you go, the Reverend Strap. This is very, very, very heavily padded on the shoulder. And this is, um, you know, this is the style of strap that, that Joe likes. And right. he, like we said, Joe, Joe designs these things. So he worked with the Levees people to get this done. And uh, they are on the site in time, in time for Christmas, folks. Check yeah. them out. It's what he wanted to play in burning things. It is what he wanted to play in burning things. Right, yes. or to use while he was playing in burning things. Yes. Um, and the silver circle R. Don't forget the silver circle R. Right, right. Yeah, that's yeah. classy. It is. Um, I can dig it. Will they be available in Europe or overseas as well? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, the, we ship we ship globally from our web store. I mean, believe me, we ship springs all over the world every yep. day. It's. You guys would be amazed at how many soft touch springs we sell. It's it's. It's really something. <laughs> yeah. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, we do ship globally. But they will eventually, I would imagine, that they will also trickle into some dealer inventory. We just have to get up and running on it as well because we don't. It's always the the first time you order something is always a pain in the butt. You never order it right the first time, LG. That's true. Uh, but made in Canada by Levies for mm -hmm. Reverend. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in these four colors so far, looks great. They are up and running and ready for Christmas. Is there any, any other uh, strap questions? Anybody have anything, LG? Nope. Are we we're are we good here? I think we're good. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bo's good to hear your voice, even though I didn't really actually hear your voice. <coughs> and we will see you guys all next week. Wait, will we? Will we? You know what? I'm going to say it right now. LG and I are going to come up here next Friday and do are the we? show. We, we are. are. We are. We usually do. We usually. I think a that. Black I think Friday that's a show. tradition. I think we do a Black Friday show. What are we going to do for a Black Friday show? Well, I don't know. Well, <laughs> if anybody has any ideas, leave 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 ideas for our Black Friday show in the comments uh, section below. Maybe we'll do all black guitars. That would black be black Friday. Fun. Yes. I don't know. Whatever. Something to do. Maybe we'll get the high wife out here for Black Friday. Make some rope. No, you don't think so. All right, everybody have a fantastic weekend. We will see you next Friday at 11 a.m. I hope that's okay with LG.
say goodbye or not? Goodbye. <laughs>